and we dare not miss the opportunity to allow you to join in. Because God has been so good to you, the least you could do is sow a seed. We're not begging, we're just extending the opportunity for you to be able to give. There are several different ways that are listed on the monitor that you can do so at this time. Please be sure and know that Rose Hill Church of Port Allen is good ground for you to sow in. And I pray that because of your giving, you reap a harvest from it. The next voice that you will hear after this next musical selection will be none other than Elder Donison. Please ready yourselves to go higher in the word and then be ready for the word. Remember, the word falls on good ground if you're the good ground that it falls on.
so good, help me sing. Help me, God. You protected so me, God. You delivered me. Oh, you delivered me. Said you saved my soul. Said you saved my soul. Oh, when I was worthless, I thought I was worthless. I thought I was worthless, but if you can't. family we greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it's such a blessing to be able to stand before you and share the Word of God this morning before I get started I want to thank God for the pastor and the first lady of this house pastor James Maurice lady your niece we thank God for you you should be typing in something right there in the remarks section saying how much you love and appreciate your pastors, they're truly after God's own heart. I am Elder Robert Donaldson, and again, I count it a pleasure to be able to stand before you this morning and share the word of God. Listen, I need a word from the Lord this morning, and I'm sure that you do too. It's God's word that keeps me going. It's God's word that gets me through. Each and every situation, I totally lean and depend on him. If you would, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles and go with me to 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. And I believe that there's a word for you this morning. I truly believe that with my whole heart. 2 Kings, the fifth chapter. We're going to deal with verses 1 through 12. We're going to do a little reading this morning, if that's okay with you. The Word of God reads there in the fifth chapter, starting at verse 1. It says, Now Naaman, commander of the army, king of Syria, was a great honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but, watch it, a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Watch how the Lord sets this thing up. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Verse 4 says, And Naaman went out and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. The king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, ten changes of clothing, then brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised when this letter comes to you that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened. When the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see he seeks a quarrel with me. Eight says, So it was when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent the king, saying, 
Why have you torn your clothes? We're almost there. Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. 9 says, Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot and stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh, flesh rather, shall be restored to you. Let's let's deal with this. Let's deal with this for a second. For, I, I just want to deal with this topic for a little while this morning. And I believe that there's, there's a lot of people dealing with a lot here this morning. I, I want to talk about don't give up, give in. Don't give up, give in. I, I'll make it plain here. I'll make it plain here. There, there are several groups of people right here this morning watching this program. Some of you are in one of the best seasons of your life. And for some of us, things are okay. They're kind of in the middle. You know, they're so-so. It, it, it's not the best. And it's certainly not the worst. In other words, you're in a season where you can kind of deal with it. But, but for many this morning, in this season, this particular season has been one of the toughest seasons you have ever had to go through. Fact about it, fact about it, somebody out there this morning looking at this program you have been pondering on simply giving up, throwing in the towel, saying enough is enough. I don't, care. I don't care what people think about me. I simply can't go any further. I don't know who I'm talking about this morning, but watch this. Watch this. This is where you find yourself. You, 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 you find yourself right here. This, this, you, you're saying stuff like, I, I didn't sign up for this. Saying stuff to yourself like, 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 I, I don't know. I, I know God's word says that he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. But sometimes I feel like I've been forsaken. Anybody out there? I know I've been there fact about it, I've been there many times. Watch this. I just come to encourage you this morning not to give up. Not to give up on God, but simply give in. What are you talking about, preacher? Don't give up. Give in to what he's calling you to do. Give in to what he's calling you to be. Give in to his ways. Whatever you have for me, God, I surrender everything to you. Simply this morning, I, I'm not giving up. But I am giving in. Many right here watching you, you saying that I didn't think this marriage would be this much work. I didn't think she was like this. I didn't think he was like this. It, 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 it's totally different than what I signed up for. Here it is. Here it is. If somebody saying this right about now, if one more Thing happens. I don't know. I don't know who that's for. But you've been saying that. If if one more thing happens, I, I don't know, preacher. I may just lose it. You, you're saying stuff like I'm tired. I simply want to give up. But but let me encourage you this morning. Watch it. Watch it. I live by this. I'm not only saying this, but I live by this. John ten and ten gets me through every time. John 10 and 10 gets me through every time. The word of God says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Watch this. But it says, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. 
God says, God says, I know, I know the enemy has been on your trail. I know you've been going through all kinds of different things. I know you have issues and circumstances and things are not working out quite like you planned it. He says, but, 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 but the enemy, he's doing his job. He says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He says, but, but there's good news. He said that I've come that you may have life and not only have life, but I want you to live abundantly. Come on, that's good news for somebody. You need to lift your hands right there in your living room, right there in your kitchen and shout, thank you, Jesus. I've come. Watch it, watch it. That low down enemy wants to steal your zeal. He wants to steal your passion because he knows that you are favored and that you're in pursuit of something. He, he wants to kill your dreams, your goals. Ultimately, he wants to kill you. He wants to destroy your God-giving destiny. Oh, but God says that I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Watch this, super abundance excessive, overflowing, surplus, over and above, more than enough. Come on, somebody's got to receive that. An extraordinary life, more than sufficient. Not just an average life, not just getting by, but God says that he has come, not only that we may live, but have an abundant life. Come on, somebody has to receive that right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, overflow, overflow. Hallelujah. Don't give up, but do give in. Sometimes life gets rough. Sometimes things get shaky. Sometimes it seems as though we won't make it. But I come as a living testimony for you this morning. Don't give up on God. Simply surrender. Do throw up your hands, but give in to his ways. God, whatever you say, that's what I'm going to do. I have a few points to help you this morning, and I'll be getting out of your way. Hallelujah. Don't give up on him. Watch this. Watch this. I've got some keys to receiving the blessings of God this morning. Look at this. If we're going to be all that God has called us to be this morning, watch this. Number one, number one, we have to look for God's blessings. I'll make it plain for you. Look for God's blessings. Look at, look at verse two. Watch this. Verse two says, and the Syrians had gone out on raids. And had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophets who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. See, a lot of times we're, we're, we're looking for our blessings in all the wrong places. And how many of you know sometimes your blessing is right there in the house with you? Sometimes your blessing is working with you. The source that looks like it won't be able to do nothing for you sometimes is your blessing from God. The problem is many of us walk right past it or look down upon what God is positioning us for at the moment. Watch this, watch this. A slave girl, an unlikely source, Naaman's healing was right there in the house with him, and he didn't even know it. Number one, look for your blessings. Not only must we look for our blessings, Come on, help me preach this morning. Pray for me. Help me preach. Not only must we look for our blessings, watch this, but we must expect opposition. See, we can't fly off the handle when things go wrong because the enemy, the enemy has gotten a sneak peek of what God has for you 
And how many of you know that he doesn't want you to have it? So he won't give it to you easy. Sometimes you're going to have to scratch, claw, crawl, do whatever you have to do to get across the finish line because the enemy is not just going to bag up and give it to you. Come here, sir. Come here, ma'am. You have to expect opposition. I'll prove it to you. Watch this. Watch this. Go to 2 Kings. Drop down to 5 and 6. It says, the king of Syria said, now go and I will send the king a letter. So he departed and took with him all this money, gold and silver, change of clothing, and all this different stuff. The letter says, now be advised when the letter comes to you that I have sent Naaman my servant to you that you may heal him of his leprosy. And Simon says, and it happened. When the king had read the letter, he tore his clothes, got upset and said, who am I supposed to be that I may kill and make alive that this man sends me to heal him? Opposition rear its ugly head. So when opposition comes, that should be a sign for you that you're on the right path. Somebody should shout, thank you, Jesus, right there. So when opposition comes, we can't freak out, we can't quit, we can't throw in the towel. That should let us know that we're on the right path. So number one, I'm going to look for my blessing. Number two, I'm not going to freak out when opposition happens. It's a part of the process. Number three, watch this, watch this. We must walk by faith and not by sight. I know you've been hearing that all your life, but I have to say it to you again this morning because many times we don't do this. We must walk by faith and not by sight. Second Kings, watch this. Let's go back to the word. The word of God says there in verse 9, it says, Now Naaman went with his horses and chariots to Elisha's house, and Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. But Naaman was furious and went away and said, indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me. In other words, does he know who I am? And stand and call on the name of the Lord God, watch this, and wave his hand over a place and heal the leprosy. What I'm trying to get us to understand here this morning is, is that we've got to learn to walk by, by faith for all I trust him. And not by what we see, not by what we feel, not by what we can touch, not by what we can taste. Sometimes it's not going to feel right. Oftentimes it's not going to look right. But we have to have faith enough to step out on whatever God says and believe that God is going to move on our behalf. So the next time God says, God says, sow a seed. The next time God says, lay hands. The next time God says, get out of your car and go to pray for her or pray for him. It's not our job to question God. It's our job to obey God. And I believe that God is going to move on our behalf. We must walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith and not by sight sight watch this Naaman was a great man Naaman had accomplished a lot Naaman had all the money that he needed plus more Naaman was riding good Naaman ate good Naaman had an entourage with him Naaman had 10 changes of clothing. 
man that had everything he needed, but he had an issue. He was a leper, just like many of us today. God has blessed us beyond measure. God has allowed many of us to be able to choose what car we want to use in the morning. He, he's allowed us to walk in our closets and choose what we want to wear, open our refrigerators, our pantries, and decide what we want to eat. And sometimes we get besides ourselves and we fail to walk by faith and not by sight. Watch this, watch this. I'm almost done, saints. I'm almost done, saints. Number four, fourth thing I, I, I really want to deal with here this morning, watch this, is that don't miss the move of God. I'll make it plain for you. Don't miss the move of God. Watch this. Waiting on a preferred method of God. How many of you know that God can bless you any way he wants to? God doesn't have to use a CEO, a CFO, a doctor, a lawyer, the president, come on somebody, a senator to bless you. God used an unlikely source to heal Naaman. And God can do the same for you, but it's up to us to be in the right place at the right time in order for God to move. See, what you have to understand is that, is that it's a process. And a lot of us want to buck against the process. And sometimes the process doesn't smell good, it doesn't look good, it doesn't taste good. But when God says move, we have to have discernment enough to move on God's behalf. Watch this. Don't miss the move of God. Waiting on the preferred method of God. Just because God blessed your girlfriend a certain way, your homeboy a certain way, does not believe does not mean that God is going to bless you that same way. So God, I, I stand here with open arms and lifted hands saying, God, however you want to do it, do it. I'm just glad that you're doing it on my behalf. Don't miss the move of God. And watch this. Last but not least, learn to submit. Learn to submit. See, see, that's a word that, that many of us really have a problem with. Sometimes when I, when I do marriage counseling and, and I pull that word out of scripture, the woman always looks funny, like submit. And then when it gets to the part where it tells the man to love, Love your wife like God loved the church. A lot of times the man will look funny at that one because God gave his very life for us. Last but not least, we have to learn to submit. See, here in America, as we find ourselves in the midst of this pandemic and, and all that has gone on, fact about it, worldwide, but I really want to focus on America because a lot of countries have dealt with a lot of stuff that we hadn't really had to deal with for years. We, we would look on the world news and say, oh, that's a shame. Stars, virus, and Ebola, and, and hunger, and, and lack, and, and violence, and, and bloodshed, and all of this different stuff. And, and protests, we would see people burning stuff and throwing rocks and, and all of this different stuff. But now that it's found itself right here in America, we have a problem with submitting. What are you talking about, preacher? Experts have, have told us for months now that, that we could stop the spread of COVID-19 if we simply stay in, when we do go out, protect ourselves, and everyone should wear a mask. And everywhere you go, you'll see some people with masks and 
Some people without masks, and many Americans would have the audacity to say that it's, it's my right to wear a mask if I want to and not wear one if I want to. When the CDC is telling us that we're going to stop the spread, everyone should follow the rules. Right there, is, 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 it's a submission problem. But saints, believe me, when it comes to God, there's going to come a season where we're going to have to submit like never before. We're going to have to throw up our hands and say, God, listen, I trust you. Sometimes I can't trace you, but I trust you. Sometimes it feels like I've been forsaken, but I trust you. Sometimes I feel unloved, God, to be honest with you, but I trust you. God, in this season of my life, I'm in an unfamiliar territory, but God, I love you. I trust you. Watch this. Watch this. We're about to go home. Verse 13, now I want to I wanna leave you with this. Fact about it. Let's back up. Let's back up to 11. It says, but Naaman was furious and went away and said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his God and wave over his hand and heal this leprosy. Are not the Abonai and the Prapa, the rivers of Damascus, better than the waters of Israel? Could not I wash in them and be clean? So he turned away in rage. One of his servants, wrapping up now, one of his servants had to check Naaman and encourage him to go and wash in the muddy Jordan. And the word of God goes on to say that Naaman dipped one time and came back up and nothing happens. He was instructed to dip seven times. Sometimes when, when we first follow what God says, we have to understand that we have to keep doing what he says. Dip the second time, third, fourth, fifth. But all oh, on the seventh time, God healed them. Because of his very obedience. Did it make sense? No, it didn't make sense. Sometimes faith doesn't make sense. Sometimes faith doesn't look right, doesn't smell right, doesn't taste right. But if we trust God with our whole heart, I'm standing here today as a living testimony to encourage you today that God's a healer. God has not forgotten about you. God has placed something special on the inside of you. So I encourage you, sister, I encourage you, my brother, not to give up on God. Fact about it, give in to his will, give in to his ways. And I promise you that God's going to bless you like never before. Even in the midst of what we're going through, God is still a faithful God. Just wanted to stop by this morning and encourage you with this word. Not to give up on God, but do give in to him. Come on, wherever you are, give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. Listen, we want to offer Christ to you this morning. We won't just assume that everybody's watching this morning is saved. Listen, if you have never given your life to Christ, that's a simple fix. 
You can do it right over the airways. Fact about it, you can call in. You can go to our website here at, at Rose Hill Church of Port Allen and, and put in there that you want to be saved. And, and one of the leaders here will give you a call and walk you through the plan of salvation. Bible simply says that if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we shall be saved. The second invitation we want to give you this morning is that for those that may have backslidden, listen, that's good news. That's a simple fix also. Bible declares that God is married to the backslider. In fact about it, God stands there with his arms wide open, ready to run and throw the robe back around your neck, put the ring back on your finger, kill the fatty calf, and celebrate on your behalf. Amen. Last but not least, if you're looking for a good Bible teaching, Bible believing church home, listen, we would love to have you here at Rose Hill Church, Port Allen. Amen. This ministry has been doing great work here in this community, and you could be one of the missing pieces to this great puzzle that we are putting together. So if you meet any of those three invitations, amen, listen, Contact us on any of our social media outlets. Contact us via our website. Listen, we hope and pray that this word has blessed you this morning. Amen. I just want to thank God for, again for Pastor James, Maurice, Lady Trinice, and the entire family here at Rose Hill Church, Port Allen. We're so excited that you have chosen to tune in with us this morning. So on behalf of Pastor James, Maurice, Lady Trinice, and the entire Rose Hill family, we just want to say we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you.